Hello, and welcome to There Will Always Be Another Book. Uh, you've probably seen me mention it in a few of the previous videos, and I am glad to say that we're finally here. Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow. I just finished this yesterday after deciding to devote an entire day to reading. Uh, I had about 200 pages left, and I said, you know what, I'm finishing this book today, I'm going to read two hours on, one hour off, uh, until I finish it, and I think about nine and a half hours later, I got through the end and completed this 902 page mammoth. Um, this book is a five out of four stars for me, even though I have no idea what it was about. Um, but to elaborate on that, I... So, the thing with Gravity's Rainbow, you've pro... It's a book... You know, I thought The Road was a book that whose rep reputation precedes it. This is a book who uh, who has a, a massive cult following. Um, and so when you read Gravity's Rainbow, there will be a point where you will realize that this book is too much for you. Uh, you it is so densely packed, it could happen within the first, uh, you know, 20 pages. It could happen 100 pages in. But unless you're some weird savant super genius you're you're not going to understand what's going on and it kind of asks an interesting question because that was something that i definitely felt was you know do i keep going i i know i'm obviously not getting all of the information uh, i know there's so many things that i'm missing but the way the book is written i still am really thoroughly enjoying it and so I kind of came to a realization that this video is not going to be a comprehensive guide or a study or anything on Gravity's Rainbow. Um, you know, Leaf by Leaf's three and a half hour video already exists and honestly that's what I'm just going to go and watch as soon as I'm finished with this video because I really do want to learn more about this book. Um, but I thought instead uh, if about providing an insight as to whether Gravity's Rainbow is worth a blind, uh, just first-time read. And for me, the answer is yeah. Like, even though that there's so many things, there's still so much that I can go back uh, and reread and eventually will reread, um, probably with the Gravity's Rainbow companion, almost definitely with it, actually. Um, a blind, just surface-level read was still so great, and even though you're going to spend a lot of the time not really knowing uh, what happens, uh, what's happening, um, there's a lot of uh, jumps between different characters that aren't easily or clearly signaled until you know that, aside from the fact that the book is separated into four uh, sections or four parts, there are also many different episodes. So I think each part has between 10 and 30 episodes. And so when you realize or when you learn that it's a very episodic novel, it can help you just be like, okay, we're talking about a different person. Let's just move on. We'll forget about what uh, Pirate Princess is doing or what Slothrop is doing and we're just focusing on this person and it can really help kind of uh, carry you through. Um, just to give some background on Gravity's Rainbow, so this was I think the only book that I packed in my carry-on from Sydney to Berlin and it was kind of funny because I was calculating you know how long I had in flight times, how long in layover and I was like well I have this big 20 hour layover in Singapore, the flights is about 30 hours, I was like, man, I'm going to finish this book, no problem. And yeah, I was not even up to part two when, by the time I got to Berlin, because this book is dense and you will take your time and you will want to take your time reading it. Um, just for some context, I think part two is 215 pages in, which uh, I know this is a massive commitment, but that's pretty much the point where I was like, oh wow, I feel like I'm actually following what's happening. Um, part one is such a kind of mind blow. All of the episodes in there, you're introduced to so many different things, but you also really sink into Pinchon's writing style and you start to really appreciate how all the sentences are constructed. And I, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. I wanted to talk about that because Pinchon and I guess a lot of beat writers uh, probably are all good at this, but 
at least in terms of my experience, Pinchon is the author for whom I think has nailed dream logic. And to describe dream logic, this is obviously different to other people, but uh, let me give you a quick example of a moment that I had in a dream where that just describes dream logic perfectly for me. Lots of people dream differently, so people are going to have different definitions, but for me, um, the setting is I'm in a van with about six seats. There's about two or three other people in the van. Uh, we're driving down the road. We see some friends on the side of the road, uh, about another six or seven people. There's not enough seats for them in the van, but we stop anyway. We pick them up and they walk into the bus and sit at the rest of the seats. We're in a bus and we drive down. And that was just a moment that I had in one of my dreams. And I woke up and was just like, oh my God, I'm so glad I dreamt this because this perfectly describes how dream logic works for me, where it wasn't that we were in a van and we changed to a bus. Uh, it wasn't that it was always a bus. It was just that because of the circumstances of there being more people, suddenly it was an undeniable truth that we were in a bus just like before it was an undeniable truth that we were in a van and after i woke it was only after i woke up that i realized the change had happened and the reason i'm uh indulging myself and uh subjecting you guys to talking about dreams is that that's how i feel like so much of gravity's rainbow is constructed where you will read a sentence or sometimes a paragraph or sometimes they're the same thing to be honest and you will read it and every single word will be constructed in such a beautiful way and it will all make perfect logical sense until you get to the end of the paragraph and you're like wait what just happened like what did I just read did, did that even make any sense and you go back and you read it again and you're like oh my god this Every single paragraph just carried me on this amazing journey. Um, so needless to say, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed Gravity's Rainbow. Um, there are, and I think that it's going to, I know it's going to be even more rewarding on rereads, but I still thought that it was, considering the stuff that I just mentioned, that sort of dream logic uh that I like, I found this to be such a great uh, surface level first time read as well to just be enjoyed and not really worried about being analyzed yet. Uh, I do have a couple of notes here though. Uh, uh, one of my <laughs> notes is all the trigger warnings, which is, this is a big book. It's a big commitment and there are going to be many reasons th to that uh, there are going to be many barriers uh, that might convince you to stop. Um, and there are some things that I just need to, uh, you know, check myself and realize that I didn't have to confront these barriers, but other people might. So I don't want to, I don't want to speak for other people, but I wrote a note that said, should women slash people of color read this, will they even enjoy it? And if you're interested in the sort of transcendental ideas and this great postmodern uh, plethora of knowledge, you will have you will enjoy the book, but there are some barriers that you will need to get through. Uh, the N word is constantly used. Uh, well, it's actually not used as often. Thinking back to it, um, but there are some characters or some sections where, you know, no bars held. They will be dropping all variations of the n-word uh women are often referred to by the c-word which didn't dawn on me straight away because i'm australian and amongst friends we say that word endearingly um but you know this is an american book <laughs> written in the 70s and i was like oh this is probably not okay <laughs> um you know it's the novel is so kind of packed with metaphor and it is so rich that if you power through it will be uh, beneficial and great anyway, but I'm also just having to acknowledge that there are some barriers that I didn't have to cross that other people will have to cross. It's already such a big book. It's already so dense uh, that it is worth just keeping these other trigger warnings uh, in mind. Um, some other things, you know, uh, there's 
I mean, this book has all the trigger warnings. You could look it up, but and for the sake of you know uh, censorship on YouTube, it's probably not worth me actually literally saying them. But yeah, this book has a lot, and it's like I still thought it was worth it, and I don't really you know I don't really agree with the anti TBR trends. I think if you're just not going to read a book, just fine. But yeah, I maybe just wanted to give a heads up, but I'm also worried about coming across as condescending, you know, like I don't want it to be, you know, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't read this book and it is up to you to judge, but it's just something worth considering. Um, there aren't strong female characters, um, but, uh, and there are some, you know, like strong, uh, black characters, but the, the problem is that... <clears throat> The problem is that there's not really strong any characters because every single character is just kind of like, you know, a moment, an experience, and they represent these this, these like rich plethora of things. But for first time readers, uh, it can be hard to have something to grab to like grab onto, and you know, you're not going to read any uh, fleshed out female characters in this book. Uh, at a first time surface level read but nevertheless I still found it really great if you're willing to push past it there's such a depth of knowledge in this book it's probably it's definitely one of the books that I'm going to reread until the day I die uh, and it was such a, a great experience to uh, come across this book and to, to power through I have some other pinch on that I do want to read. I actually own The Crying of uh, Lot 49, uh, still with the receipt in it, but maybe I'll be moving on to that soon. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, you know, like I said, this video isn't going to be comprehensive. It's not going to be anything new, uh, and there's a ton of great resources for learning more about Gravity's Rainbow, but I just wanted to make this video to give a uh, first thoughts and comments impression and just to say that there are many uh, barriers that you will need to get over not least of which is the length um, but I think that if you power through it you can find even on a first time read Gravity's Rainbow to be a really great uh, experience and very worth reading um, I'm curious as always to hear your guys' comments uh what you think what you thought about this book um whether you think the that the the themes or the trigger warnings that i talked about weren't actually as bad or if they were bad uh and you weren't able to get through let me know uh, i'm curious to hear what your thoughts are but thanks as always for watching make sure you keep reading there will always be another book and i will see you in the next video